Today's data processing environment demands that computing power be made more accessible to the end user. At the end of 1979, there was a terminal for every 44 employees in the United States. We expect this to grow to about one for each eight employees by the mid-1980s. This explosion of computer end users has already accelerated the requirement for easier to use, more responsive, and more reliable computing resources. These demands, coupled with reduced hardware costs, have created tremendous opportunity. However, more systems have typically led to more operating people, and the growing cost and availability of data processing personnel have become a major inhibitor to growth. Distributed data processing geographically distributes computing power, providing local responsive solutions. The challenge is to accomplish this without creating the need for more skilled data processing people. What you are about to see is a new creative approach to distributed processing, made possible by the IBM 4300 series in combination with VM370 and two new IBM products. This combination makes remote unattended operation a reality. The IBM products that make this possible are the new 4300 remote operator console facility and the VM370 programmable operator. These products were tested and refined early in their development on the campuses of the University of Maine. The innovative work that led to their development originated at the IBM Cambridge Scientific Center and is a good example of the center's ability to anticipate customer needs early enough to develop solutions as we broaden the 4300 family and IBM distributed systems alternatives. The VM programmable operator, first available with VM system product release two, and the 4300 remote operator console facility are significant announcements. They allow distributed 4300s with VM370 to operate unattended by skilled DP personnel, a key requirement in today's economic environment. They are important announcements for the Cambridge Scientific Center as they mark the completion of work started here in 1976. At that time, there was a growing interest in distributed processing. Since our mission is to perform advanced technology research on computing systems, we began addressing concerns that would have to be resolved if distributed systems were to become a reality. Concerns such as what is a distributed system? How will it operate? What is its relationship to the central system? Who would the user be? What capabilities do people want in distributed systems? And how can we distribute processing while preserving investments in existing programs? Capitalizing on our System 370 and networking experience, we began our project by linking the host System 370 to a small distributed System 370. During development of the 4300 series, we focused on its use as a distributed system using VM370, as the 4300 series provided a modular economic solution. With its capabilities, those inherent in System 370 architecture and VM370, we were confident of arriving at answers to the questions, what is a distributed processor, and how should it be managed? As to the operation of distributed systems, we realize that our current systems require on-site operators to manage and control operations. The elimination of on-site DP staff for geographically distributed processors was a key requirement. So we set about computerizing the process. The results of our initial hardware prototype led to a function now integrated into the 4300 service processor as the remote operator console facility. This allows distributed systems to be placed in unattended environments. We also developed a software prototype of the VM programmable operator. It routes critical VM370 operator messages from the distributed system to the host operator, logging the rest at the distributed system. It allows automatic responses to be invoked at the distributed site or the host operator to issue commands for controlling the remote system. These functions are equally applicable to distributed, host, and centralized environments. 
Basic to our work were VM370 products that provided networking communication between systems, problem diagnosis and performance monitoring from the central site, as well as user access to host facilities. We feel that VM370's capabilities provide protection of System 370 programming investment, provide familiar user interfaces, and minimize the need for new systems programming skills. They also meet requirements for distributed information center or application development facilities. To help ensure that the Cambridge prototypes met their objectives, a joint study was undertaken with the University of Maine. At the university, their growing computing environment led them to consider distributing processors into remote locations. The seven institutions of the University of Maine provide educational opportunity to all regions of the state. Each is unique and relatively autonomous, but share a common mission, teaching, research, and public service. General computing facilities are provided throughout the university by a system-wide service. During the 1970s, computer utilization quickly spread, and many new online uses were added by instruction, research, and administrative personnel. Now, with remote terminals, facilities have been extended throughout the university's departments and campuses. We operate as a computing utility. A wide range of packaged software has been provided, which allows both academic and administrative users to satisfy their general needs. Academic users also have available to them a variety of compilers with which they solve unique needs. The implementation of a retrieval language has allowed administrative users to satisfy most of their normal programming requirements. A total of 10 people provide application support for all of our end users. Both batch and interactive modes of operation are available. VM370 is the base system. The added freedom provided to users by these facilities has led to rapidly growing usage. The increased demand required that we provide more computing power where it was needed. We wanted to improve availability without increasing communication costs. The solution had to be cost effective overall. We established goals for distributing processing, accommodate growing computer requirements, by providing availability to users in a modular, cost-effective manner. Provide continuity for our users as we distributed systems by maintaining familiar user interfaces and access to currently available programs, applications, or facilities. And by protecting the university's programming and application investment. Minimize requirements for additional DP personnel, applications, systems, or operational at either the central or remote sites. The announcement of the 4300 series provided the common architectural base with which we could satisfy and support our goals for the university's computing growth at an affordable cost. We had already distributed to our users much control over their computing requirements. We investigated distributed data processing as the next step, distributing the computing power itself. We entered the world of distributed processing with a 4331 using VM370. The central system supporting our distributed campus users is located on the Arno campus. Approximately 120 concurrently active terminals support research, instructional, and administrative problem solving needs. Another 50 active terminals support the university's administrative and transaction processing. The terminals at each of the campuses vary from batch workstations to display and hard copy terminals. The 4300 series provided a common System 370 architecture which would allow us to distribute a common VM interactive system. We began by installing a 4331 in Portland to locally service research and instructional users who previously communicated with the 3031 via dial-up lines. During our early planning for distributing systems, we raised some interesting questions regarding one goal in particular, minimizing the need for additional DP personnel. How might we handle the console at the remote processor? How would we determine and resolve hardware and software problems? What vehicles might be used to distribute software from the host in Orono after testing? How could we understand and control the performance of the remote system? 
Using the M370 facilities, we began to experiment with the operation of the Portland 4331 with a remote terminal in Orono. On-site assistance was still required at the remote site to initialize the system and address hardware and software failures. We communicated between the 4331 and the host with a VM networking package. A product called VM Passthrough became available that greatly facilitated the distribution of the system. VM Passthrough provided a means of signing on to the remote system from the central site to perform routine system maintenance. It also allowed 4331 users to access facilities only available on the host. With VM Passthrough and the VM networking package, we were able to download software and implement it without leaving the central site. Only executable code is kept at the remote location. This did allow us to test software at the host and then distribute it to the 4331, but it did not address problem diagnosis, failure recovery, or complete remote console operation. Two prototype packages were then made available through a joint study with the Cambridge Scientific Center. They appeared to resolve many of our questions. First, a hardware prototype, now called the Remote Operator Console Facility, allowed this host system operator to perform functions normally done only by a local console operator, including initial program load, memory display and alter, and looking at hardware logs. Second, the VM programmable operator provided filtering of operator messages on the distributed system and sending to the host only those selected by the installation as critical. It also allowed the host operator to issue commands to the remote system, which could then operate completely unattended. These prototypes answered our questions of operating the distributed system using a remote console. They also minimized our requirement for additional DP operators. Other products were installed to monitor activity and perform problem analysis on the remote system. The VM real-time monitor provided performance information and related threshold warnings to the central host operator. This addressed the question of managing performance remotely. VM Interactive Problem Control System was installed to perform software problem analysis and APAR generation. For months now, VM370 has been running unattended on the Portland 4331, controlled by the central operator in Orono. Only the card reader, printer, and the terminals are accessible to users. The rest of the configuration is in a locked room and rarely accessed. Between December 1980 and August 1981, my staff and I traveled the 150 miles from Orono to Portland, but never because of a direct need to support the 4331. Based on several months of experience with the distributed 4331, we feel the M370, the two prototype packages, and the other VM370 products have all been integral to our successful entry into distributed processing. All the pieces meshed to address what we had perceived as major unresolved questions for us about the suitability of distributed processing. An additional benefit worth note is that we found the programmable operator facility highly desirable at the central site. It has resulted in reducing the total number of messages from the central and the distributed processor to far below the original load. We now know we can handle several additional remote processors as they are required with the existing operation staff. We have answered our concern about distributed processing with no additional DP personnel. The Portland users feel they are better served and look forward to expanded functions and facilities. There is a much more comfortable feeling knowing a computer is on site. In summary, when we started looking to distributed processing to economically solve our geographic and growth problems, we set specific goals. I'd like to review these goals in the light of our experience. The 4300 series is providing economic modular growth capability, allowing us to offload from the central site. In Portland, we have added considerable computing capability with the 4331, 
improving availability, and reducing communication costs. We plan to initiate 4331s at other sites and will distribute more 4300s when required. The 4331 in combination with the 3031, both using VM370 as our common system, has allowed us to provide continuity to our users. They are generally unaware of the system changes. Their interfaces to the system facilities are unchanged and all the previously available programs and applications are accessible. We have realized our goal to minimize the need for additional DP personnel. We run the 4331 unattended locally, controlled with the existing staff at the central site. The system and programs are maintained at the central site by the existing support staff. And because we were able to distribute VM370, no additional programming was required. Because of our experience with the 4331 and VM370 as vehicles for distributed processing and their ability to reach our goals, we feel it has been a cost-effective distributed system solution for the University of Maine. As we have seen, the University of Maine's experience with the 4300 and VM has provided dramatic cost benefits to the distribution of computing. I believe many of our customers can take advantage of this capability and realize similar benefits. It's another example of IBM's continual effort to reduce complexity and costs. Thank you.